How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be working on how to create a secure login using PHP. We're going to start from the ground up here so we won't skip any steps. We'll, we'll get through the HTML and if you look on your screen right now this is what we're going to be making. Something just like this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's get started. We're going to start by creating an index.php file. This is going to be our secure site that we want to be able to log into. Now this isn't very secure, so we're going to go ahead and use session variables to check if a user is verified. Session variables are going to get saved in your browser for a short period of time, so they won't go away when you leave the page, but they will expire eventually. So all I'm doing here is checking if the session variable verified is set, or if, sorry, if it's not set, or if it's not true, that means the user is not logged in. So we're just going to go ahead and redirect them to a login page that we're going to call login.php. I also put a die underneath that for good measure just to make sure no more of the page gets loaded. All right, so as you can see now, we are we get moved to the login.php file, which does not exist. So let's go ahead and make that. I'm going to set up a basic form. I'll speed through all the CSS real quick. And eventually we have this. So I'm using form here, which is really important because it can make our lives a lot easier when we go into the JavaScript. So let's let's go ahead and start doing that. We're going to add a script tag, create a new script.js file, and we're going to go ahead and create our login function. And this is a function we want to run when we click that login button. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have that on click set up. So next we're going to create our function. We're going to call it login. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use an XHR request to, to basically send a request <clears throat> to the PHP script that we have on our server. So this is how this is going to look. We make a new XML HTTP request. We're going to do xhr.open post. This is the method, so you can do post, get, any of those. The next uh, argument is going to be the file, which is going to be php slash login.php, and we'll make that in a little bit. True is just for asynchronous, so we're going to just leave that as it is. And then we're going to XHR send all of our form data. And to get our form data, we just want to make a new form data object and pass in the form that we made on our HTML page. And that is the easiest way to send data over Ajax. A lot of people like to use jQuery to make Ajax requests, but it's so unnecessary to include an entire library just for that one feature. So we're going to also go ahead and add an event listener for the ready state change. This is so that we can figure out when the request is finished processing. We just want to check if the ready state is 4 and the status is 200. That means that it successfully completed running the script. And then at that point we can get the result of whatever, whatever process we just ran. And that's going to be the response text. So for now we'll just go ahead and alert that. And now we need to go ahead and make our our folder and create our login.php file. Okay, so this is one of the most important files, right? This is what's going to keep it secure. Um, but before we really get into the actual login part, let's go ahead and make sure we're sending over our variables. We're just going to print out every post variable that we sent over. It's important that in your form you use those, uh, use a name on all of your input elements because that's going to be the name of your variables. As you can see here, we have username and password. Those are the names associated with those input um, elements. So now that we know that that's working, let us go ahead and jump into the database first. We're going to want to create a new table. This is an empty database that I have called YouTube. We're going to go ahead and make a users table. We'll have a username and a password field, just like this. And we're going to go ahead and insert some random user, just like this. And it's important to note that I'm using the password function. You'll see what that does in a second. I refresh this, you can see that their, the user's password is now hashed. Hashing is an irreversible process, but it's okay because we can just compare whatever the user enters with a hash version of what they enter. This is important because if someone somehow breaks into your database, they won't be able to see all of your user's passwords. And there's a, a lot of better ways to do this. You, you could also implement salting, which is an entirely different topic for another video, but that would make uh, your, your database way more secure. So here all I'm doing is I'm connecting to the database, right? We have our connect line, which is just the host name, the username, the password, and then the database. And then we're going to write a quick prepared statement. 
this is going to be some SQL code that we're going to run. So we're going to select all from our table where username equals question mark and password equals, now this is very important, password question mark. We're also going to limit one because we only want to look for one user. Then what we got to do is we got to fill in those question marks, right? So we use bind param. The two S's stand for string. And then we're going to pass in our two strings, which is just going to be the username and the password variable that were sent through the post request. Then from there, we just run execute, we run store result, and now we can check how many rows were found by that select query. If one row was found, that means that one user was found, and that means they put in the correct username and password. So we can go ahead and echo out true and set their session variable verified to start. Of course, we gotta make sure we call session start at the beginning of our script. Otherwise, we echo false, and we can just close out of both of our statement and our connect, make sure that those connections are closed. Perfect. We want our JavaScript to react to whatever that response was. So if the response was true, we wanna move the user to the secure site, which is index.php, and otherwise, we're gonna send them a little message. So let's go ahead and test this out real quick. There we go, we logged in successfully. And then let's, uh, let's go ahead and try putting in an incorrect username and password, and then we get that error. So it seems like everything's working fine. Um, now what I think we really need to do is create a logout button. Um, the login script and everything is, is obviously important in security, but there are so many other parts of your, of your code that need to be secure as well. One thing people can easily mess up is the logout. They'll actually save information on the session. So it's really important that you do this correctly. So here you can see I'm just modifying the login function for the logout function. I'm just going to change the PHP um, file to logout.php, which we'll create right now. And I changed some of the logic so that we're redirecting back to the login page. All you need to do is those two lines right there. Session start, session destroy. You want to destroy the entire session. You don't want to save any data on the user. That is the most secure way to log out. And we're going to go ahead and make sure everything works. We get incorrect password. We're logging with the correct thing. We get in, we log out, and we should be able to do that successfully, and everything works. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please stick around for any future videos and check out our image processing series, which is just coming out. Thank you guys so much for watching.